Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 25 of my turn-based battle system tutorial series. Um, I continue this series for a slightly bit since I got a patron who is going to donate to that series and of course had a lot of fixes and a lot of changes for me and for you guys too. And that's where we're, what we are going to start with. At first we are fixing a small bug actually uh, and take care of that um yeah a slightly cha chance of getting the wrong perform list item deleted um yeah to make sure that this is not going to happen um in the dead state so what we are going to do at first is we open up the enemy state machine and as you can see i'm in the turn state dead in our state machine and where we are going through in that for loop when we are going through that action is um, what we want to make sure is that we are checking if this is not the zeroth item in the perform list we are going to check over so basically we don't start at um, at uh, zero in this case but we would basically start at one so what we do is we say if i is not equal than zero to zero so it's already through zero but it is already at position one only then perform uh the delete action of all the actions or all the perform list items this enemy which is going to die is in don't forget to save the script and do the same for the hero state machine so find the turn state dead once again go down to into the for uh, into the for loop where we are looping through all the items in the perform list and do the same in here so if i is not equal zero so it's not the z at the zeroest item so what what this does again it prevents a double delete by um the performer and by the dying hero or dying enemy because we get rid of the item at the zeroth position in the attacking guy's time for action i enumerator at that point we are removing the zeroth item from the perform list anyway so that's what we are going to prevent so this um, is not going to get rid of the zeroth item in the perform list because the performer itself is going to delete that item anyway. So that was a small bug fix. Don't forget to save the hero state machine again. Don't forget this, to save the enemy state machine again. And what we are going to do next are some changes into code and to other things. Um, the, the pattern came over. Let's get back to the Unity and what we are going to do next is we are taking care of all the spawn points. Um, not the spawn points in the battle scene but in the town and in the world map. Because uh, the pattern meant the, my, that my uh, handling of all that spawn points like going to use a 100 prefabs for this um, as we already created some spawn point prefabs. Um, in this case it was just two but let's say we have 100 towns in our game this will be a 200 spawn points as prefabs and 200 tags where we are going to need uh, for all that handling so let's go back to our town scene and let's see what we can do for this as you also have seen as we have three spawn points in here to enter houses or get back to them and um, instead we can get uh, rid of all that um, handling for them and use everything a bit different so what are we doing currently currently we are hitting that green um, game object in here and we have our collision handler for this one what we also do is we have some spawn points um, as prefabs of game objects we are dragging into that so um, let's go and open up the collision handler at first and let's change some stuff in here as you can see this is a scene to load we're going to load the current scene is going to be the world map which we just have here as a string so we can pass in any string we want but we cannot do that with the spawn points because currently we just used a lot of game objects or spawn points um, to handle that at the next point so what we're gonna do is we create another public string instead of that game object 
and this is going to be the spawn point name. So, so we have the possibility to read the name from game objects and compare them with everything else. We can pass in any name of that game object. So that we just need to name them properly and we can pass in any name later on. So we don't need a lot of prefabs um, and drag them in. We just need the name of that specific game object. So, okay, so what we also did is a lot of tags. A lot of tags for our enter town and leave town. And later on, when we're leaving and entering any other towns, that would be troublesome. What we want to make sure is that we get rid of leave town and of enter town. Oh, it also deleted my region one. Let's get this one back for a second and add another one. And this is going to be my, I don't know, teleporter tag. So with the teleporter tag, we could tag all our spawn, um, yeah, regions. And when we are hitting a, a teleport attack, then we can do a different code. This one for this house, for example, or for that door, would be another teleport attack. So when we are tagging all our uh, all our items in here with a teleport attack, we can check if we are hitting any teleport attack and can now um, check what's the collision handler's next spawn point, for example, the next spawn point name. So what we do is we go to our hero movement and as you have seen there are some problems we just encounter since we got rid of that spawn point game object and as you can see um, we basically got rid of the spawn point transform to position because we are not able to use them. So I'm gonna command them out, save, get back and see if there are any other problems at the moment. That's fine, nothing here. Also, as you can see, if we would have 20 towns, we would have a lot of text to check. Um, and that would be a, I don't know, monster big on trigger enter function. So what we do is we get rid of all that stuff in here and just easing that thing up. Um, so let's command the wool trigger enter stuff out here for the other tag enter town and for the other tag leave town and we'll create a new one. And what we do is we check if the other dot tag is going to be equal to the teleporter tag we just created. Make sure that you don't have any typos and also uh, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, what we do next is we do the same what we already had here. We're gonna create um, a connection to the collision handler itself. And so we are going to get the component collision um, handler of the other game object. So let's save that. And now what we need to do is we need to go into our game manager. We are going to add a new public string which is going to save or store the next spawn point. So I'm gonna uh, comment this one out, spawn point. So what is this is a public string next spawn point. The next spawn point is going to be the connection to the collision handler as we have in here the spawn point name. What we do is from the hero movement, we pass in the collision handler spawn point name into the game manager object. So the game manager or the game manager, yeah, script. So the game manager knows, aha, uh -huh, okay, this is the next spawn point we are going to go in or go out or whatever. So what we say is game manager dot instance, as we already have done before, and instead of hero next position or next hero position, we are going to set the next spawn point to be equal, oops, to be equal to the call to spawn point name. So we take the spawn point name from the currently uh, set spawn point and pass it into the game manager object or game manager instance. So for the final touches, we do the same as we had done before. We say game manager dot instance dot scene to load is going to be equal to call dot scene to load. And the last one, of course, is game manager dot instance um, dot load scene so or load next scene so we can uh, yeah load the next scene when we are hitting that teleporter don't forget to save and uh, I already got rid of the old code so that's it for that part 
Okay, so now we uh, change the start uh, just a bit um, because we have changed the uh, slightly bit. What we do is we want to make sure that if there is any set um, any set spawn point already, uh, then we want to make sure that the hero is spawning at the correct position. So what we say is if game manager dot instance dot next spawn point is not equal nothing so it has been set by anything already then what we want to make sure is that we set the spawn position to we create a new um, game object for this it's going to be our spawn point for example and this is going to be equal to game object dot find and in brackets what we want to do is we want to find game manager dot instance dot uh, next spawn point. So this is going to be our next spawn point. Uh, because we have the name, we can search for that specific, specific name and uh, yeah, search the correct game object for this. What we want to do is we want to bring that in there. Uh, so our transformer position is going to be um, instead of game manager object, uh, game manager instance hero position, we want to set this one to spawn point dot transformer position gonna save also we want to reset the spawn point um, the next spawn point to be nothing so game manager dot instance dot next spawn point is going to be equal to nothing so we clear off the string and pass a nothing in there don't forget to save once again we want to check if the last position is going to be set so we say else if game manager dot instance dot last hero position is not equal vector 3.0 and in here what we want to do is we want to say transform the position is going to be equal to game manager dot instance dot last hero position and what we also want to do is we want to set game manager dot instance dot last hero position back to vector 3.0 okay so now we need to take the changes um, into all our spawning game objects and rename them and teleport uh, or uh, create all the tags for them um, and set them up also we want to make sure that we don't have any typos or errors let's see oh yes I forgot that one so I need to make sure that's equal equal teleporter don't forget to save that change and then we should be ready to go there we go so in this um, area in here what we have is that the specific um, teleporting object so when we are running into that collision handler we want to load the scene world map and we want to name or see what the spawn points name on the other side is so we need to pass in that parameter into that spawn point name what we also can do is we can get rid of all that spawn point prefabs but at first let's set up everything in here once again so now what I need is I need the spawn point name on the other side of the world map wherever we are going to land in so don't forget to save the scene just in case because we have to, had made some small changes in here and now we load the scene world map now we go to our tile what we have here and this is our spawn point it's called sp underscore leaf town one so as I maybe already mentioned in other videos this is really a really important uh, naming convention in this case since we don't want or we, we want to avoid double names and so on let's go back to town one where are we uh, select our our uh, collision um, yeah object and pass in sp leaf town one don't forget to yeah save if it's darkish black it's because of the the prefab in here um, but we don't want to change that to the prefab so I'll just leave that as it is uh, yeah as I said save the scene and now what we want to do is we want to take the name of that spawn point in here which is SP enter town one we're gonna copy that name 
and leave back to the world map once again. So open world map. Again, go to that collider in here, which is directly on the town, which is the scene to load town 1, and the spawn point name is going to be SP enter town 1. Again, we can get rid of the complete folder, or with all the spawn point prefabs inside. Don't forget to save. Um, this just has no uh, prefab left, so basically, yeah, it doesn't matter if you have that or not. I go into the scene town 1 once again. There's a missing prefab in here. Oh, that was my spawn point. So I have to uh, create another one. So I'm gonna delete that and I take just one of that guys in here and duplicate that. And I call this one sp underscore, I believe it was leave town one. Oh no, it's enter town one because we are entering the town. And I drag this one all over that place as it has been before. I'm gonna go over and copy that pretty quick once again. Don't forget to save. Uh, I can also apply the changes if I want to to the prefab, but I don't think we need to. I could also take this one out of the prefab and can update this one once again. Uh, let's get back to the world map. And as a final step, we need to, um, yeah, change the tag of the town to be teleporter. And that's it. Now we have set it up everything. We already, or I already set it up everything in town. So we can now go over and test this stuff out. I just uh, dragged over the region a bit so I don't encounter any pebbles. So for now I can just go over and move my little guy over here into the town. And once we are hitting that, we are entering the correct spawn point over here. And when we are leaving the town, we will be here at that point where the other spawn point is. And that's everything I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Sum this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.